macOS 10.15, now known as macOS Catalina, has been officially announced, and in this video we're going to go hands-on with the first beta of the latest operating system and check out some of Catalina's new features. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. In macOS Catalina, Apple is discontinuing iTunes and it will be replaced by three applications, music, podcasts, and TV. Personally, I think we probably could just combine Apple Music and Podcasts into one app, but nevertheless, we have three new apps that are clean, modern, and now more streamlined for users. If you want to sync your iOS device with your Mac, simply plug it in and open up Finder window to manage your devices. I also appreciate the fact that when you do plug in your phone, it doesn't actually automatically open up windows and pop-ups and start trying to sync everything immediately. Instead, nothing actually happens until you go into Finder and begin device management. Project Catalyst, Apple's project for bringing iOS apps to the Mac, was also formally announced and is ready for third-party developers to start porting over their work. Developers can now make one single application that will work across all platforms, including macOS, by simply checking the box inside of Xcode, which should dramatically increase the number of Mac apps in the near future. Apple also showed off a few apps that have been developed, like Asphalt 9 Legends and Jira, just to name a few. I personally am looking forward to finally having a Twitter app on the Mac again. Another major new feature Apple announced for macOS Catalina is Sidecar, which allows users to use the iPad as an extended display for your Mac. To do this, simply hover over the green full screen button in an application, and now you'll be shown a few different options like snapping the window to the left or right, making it easier to jump into multitasking, enter full screen, or send the app over to your iPad. All of this happens wirelessly, which is a huge feature for those who want to use their iPad as a secondary display. This also allows for Apple Pencil support for mocking up documents and giving artists the chance to use an Apple Pencil and draw on their iPad and quickly jump into an editing program on their Mac for the same artwork. Think of the iPad as now being used like a Wacom tablet, giving you fine control and detail over your artwork or mockups. So far, it works pretty well with little hiccups aside from the usual beta bugs. The best part is this feature is open to third-party developers like Adobe, Affinity Photo, and popular Apple apps like Final Cut Pro are also supported. Screen time is also available for the Mac, which gives users the ability to track their usage habits across iOS and now macOS, along with great parental controls for kids with Mac-specific features like One More Minute, which allows users to request one more minute to wrap up and save any projects that you might be working on. Like iOS, Find My Friends and Find My iPhone has now been combined into the Find My application and is now available on macOS. The new Find Offline Devices feature is particularly useful with a Mac, particularly a MacBook. When not in use, they're usually closed, and so leveraging Wi-Fi and Bluetooth with nearby connected devices for a MacBook that's not in use is extremely helpful. Finally, macOS Catalina is gaining an accessibility feature called Voice Control, which lets users control their Mac entirely with their voice. This is aimed at anyone who can't operate traditional input devices and uses Siri speech recognition technology. There are lots of small updates and changes across apps like Safari, Mail, QuickTime, Notes, etc. that will go in more detail in a separate video over the course of the next week, so be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video. This has been Dan with MacRumors. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video. Hey,